Design Division Champions. In 2019, last time made it to the dump, they were finalists. They're down by one match. They're looking for a comeback here. Please welcome back from Shanghai Jiao Tong University in Shanghai, China, Titan! Our field is set. Let's get finals two underway. Audience, count it down with me. In three, two, one, go! It's the 45 seconds of Autonomous here in the next U division. We've got two up on red, two up on blue. Looks like Shanghai Jiao Tong University managed to get the first set of three against Wisco here. And it looks like both of them are firing up high. Few misses on red, few misses on blue as well. Fairly even set between Wisconsin and Shanghai here. Platteville doing a great job getting another set up high, but Shanghai is right back there with another set of three. SJTU2, a dominating performance throughout their division this weekend. With five seconds left in Autonomous, all four robots still in motion, still collecting. And we are now going to take time to let our referees count up this amazing autonomous performance. Two rollers each, two for red, two for blue. It's going to come down to those high score discs. And it looks really close. Referees consulting here. Blue is going to take the autonomous bonus. Drivers ready. Here we go in three, two, one, go! Shanghai Jiao Tong picking up from the field, taking an early lead. Real time scoring 102 to 88 on red. There goes a set of three, but all of them flying off the top of the discs. Wisco going into the corner. Looks like they're going to try to play some defense, getting in front of SJTU, trying to crowd them out. Rollers going back over to red. Now three in favor of red with under a minute remaining on the clock. Wisco cleaning up the field, looking to starve SJTU of game pieces. Only four discs down low on the field. Wisco's shot costs two down onto the field. With 35 seconds remaining on the clock, Wisco going up against Titan in the middle of the field. And we're heading back to the rollers. Only one disc left in a non-scoring position, and they pair off. Wisco Blue over here against SJTU. Wisco Orange on the far corner. 17 seconds remaining on the clock. Disc going on the ground. 15 seconds remaining on the clock. SJTU making a break for it. Here comes the end game. They block. Seven seconds left on the clock. Two, one. Wisco deploys. Time is up. An absolutely incredible performance. This is what you can only find here in Vex U. Our referees are gonna have time picking this one up. Grant, I'm gonna throw the action back over to you. Thanks so much, George. Man, when it works, it works. That thing is beautiful. Um, so I'm here with somebody else who knows, uh, is no stranger to unique VexU mechanisms. This is Jack from SJTU. Jack, how you doing? Hello, guys. I'm feeling pretty good. How are you feeling? <laughs> hey, feeling great. Jack, I got a couple questions for you. First, what's the story with the panda? Uh, this is uh, the panda we purchased, which is a symbol of our VexU team because, like, when we were down here in the dome in 2019, our captain's English name is actually Panda. We all, we all like this cute panda, so we take it as a symbol of that guy, and he's actually down here with us. Oh, uh, excellent. Everyone loves Panda. Yep. Yeah. So, so SJTU, we don't have your robot here, but if anybody had a chance to see it this weekend, they know it was the super clean, carbon fiber, custom aluminum billet, like all this incredible stuff. Um, how? Tell me about how you came up with those parts, how, what your design process was like for those. So the design process for us is like we, we first cut everything, and like we pre-test pre them by building prototypes with like easier materials that we were able to get. For example, PC panels, polycarbon, like polycarbon, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> It's like like carbon fibers are a little, a little bit more expensive for us to per to to like purchase and then fabricate. A little bit more expensive for everybody. Though. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so so did you run any challenges with fabricating the carbon fiber? Like it's how? Like, yeah. we, we have like water cutting machines in our school, so it doesn't matter. But like the, the the thing is like you need to put efforts into it so that we that like the cutting is the most time consuming process. But like fabricating is not that there's not much an issue. 
So you ran into some unique issues here at Vex Worlds um, with uh, how you wrote, uh, behave differently on skills versus the divisions. Can you talk about that? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, for example, in the skills challenge, we really we, we actually found out that in the first skills run, we were not able to achieve the as high score as we expected because like. I would I would say that the humidity and the temperature in the in the room was a bit dif a bit different from our practice field. So what we did was after our first first run, we adjusted the flywheel speed according to uh, what we observed from the videos we have recorded, and then we were able to get a a full score second run. You actually like took a temperature gun out to the the fields, right, and and adjusted. <laughs> but, oh, okay, okay. But but the 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 ability to know your robot that well and know exactly what parameters to change. I mean, how do you reach that point, that stage? It's like you get experience when you like do these programming. It like 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 you improve yourself during like improving your programs, right? Like programming skills like improve like as as you like solve more problems. It's most of it's a problem solving process, right? So like you, you learn during that process, and that's how we do it. Absolutely. Well, Jack, we've got a treat actually. Uh, we have the ability to show this whole dome your robot. So let's take a look, video guy.